This is Sierra Ferry Radio, and we're here with Point North. Hi. Hello. So our first question is, as an upcoming band, um, and your music starting to get like recognition and stuff like that, like how long has that been? It's been crazy. <laughs> it's been very fulfilling. It's really cool to see it kind of generally over time yeah. build. Um, instead of just shooting up, I think we can appreciate it more. Yeah, because yeah. you've worked so hard so yeah. far. Yeah. Do you think you are going to be touring more? Do you see it out there more? Oh, uh, we know we're going to be touring more. Yeah, we are going to be touring more. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, 2020 like already booked up, which is crazy. And like uh, Sage said, it's been a really slow burn, so it's cool to see uh, mm -hmm. you know, the fruits of our labor. You can really sit and appreciate it. And let kind of like let it simmer. I think that's really cool. I, I, I read a thing earlier today that, today that was someone talking about blowing up fast and how it kind of loses its value. You know? Yeah. I feel like for us, we're at a point where it's every day we're checking and it's getting bigger and bigger slowly. So it's really cool to watch and mm -hmm. see all the numbers firsthand. So. Yeah. Upcoming is an interesting word too because all of us have been doing this in some form or fashion for a super long time. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I know John and I have been in bands for you know, the greater part of the last almost 10 years now. Mm -hmm. um, so in a lot of ways, it feels like it's been this long, slow process, but in so many ways, with this being our most recent project, you know, the band doing so many cool things, you know, in, in the most recent times, um, it's, a, it's an interesting kind of world we're in. Mm -hmm. That's been really exciting. Yeah. And then you guys recently had a single with Kellen Quinn. Mm -hmm. So how did that kick off? Let me take it. Um, so I was engineering their new album. The, um, how it feels to be lost with my friend Zach Sperini. And that's how I met uh, the sleeping guys. And it was like a month period of us doing the portion that I was like there for. And so while I was there, like we just got to hang out and become kind of friends. And I would show the guys and Kellen like some of the stuff I've been writing at home. And that's kind of when they found out like about like me being a writer and a singer and then uh, found out about Point North eventually. And then we actually like, did a song together that's out there in the world right now, um, which didn't end up making their album, but Kellen was like, yo, let's like go on tour at some point. We're like, cool. And uh, we didn't know if it was gonna happen, and then here we are. Here we are. <laughs> and then as far, yeah, as far as the song, it all kind of just like lined up. Um, we were looking for some features to get on our new album, and we thought it was a cool idea um, to get Kellen on it. It kind of fit the vibe, and. It made sense with the tour lining up, and it was cool, it was crazy, just the stars kind of aligned, and he flew out for emo night, um, and then while he was in LA, uh, we just tracked it at my house and sent it off to get mixed, and here we are. It came, came, came together pretty quickly. Yeah, it was really fast, yeah. but we we're stoked that he was down. Yeah. Because it's helping a lot, and it's great. Yeah. Super appreciative. The response yeah. has been awesome. And he's obviously very cool to work with. But is there anyone else that you like to work with as a band? So we have another feature um, on the album for I think our next single too. Uh, we'll say who it is, but he he's also uh, at Madden, uh, the management company which Sleeping is at, and we're super excited about that. Um, I don't think we have anything else really set in stone. Who would you like to work with? Um, I don't know. It's a tough question. See, like, I, would, I would love like Halsey. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool. I would love someone like Halsey. Um, I had I I asked my uh, my friend Jason Butler from The Fever mm -hmm. to get on a song, and he said he'd be into it. We haven't really talked more about it because we were s rushing so much to get ready for tour. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of like heavier elements on the new album, so. There's a spot where I thought that would be sick. So I, I love knowing Jason for like a very long time, so that would be really cool. We also just wrote with Four Year Strong a couple of days ago, which is really sick. Mm -hmm. Great guys. Uh, it was a cool to kind of put both of our vibes together and mm -hmm. see what happens. So that was really cool. Thing. Yeah, that was sick. We just pulled like a 14 hour day yeah. Yeah. and just like crushed out as much of the song as we could. Nor it's, it's always interesting doing like the first writing session with new people. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes it's like four hours and you have a song done and it's like sometimes it's like more of a grind But it's like a very like vibey thing um, But it was like awesome and we uh, we love it. So we're gonna go home and, and finish it up. Yeah, um, but I don't know you know what you want to work with? I don't know Interestingly enough, I would always like to find a cool like, female counterpoint to your vocals, which would be cool Yeah, definitely um, something in like the dark and kind of spooky world would be fun 
Yeah, yeah. I would say Jonah Hall's gonna kill that. Yeah. 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 Maybe like build that out. Someday. It'll be very sick, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And then you guys are all from California. Is this the first time you've toured with this weather? No, this is no. the best winter weather we've toured. Yeah. Yeah. And Sage is actually from the Midwest, yeah. so Sage has a little bit more of cold experience than I lost than it. John and I do. When I moved to California, I lost my cold sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cold, yeah. Skin. it's so gone. Yeah. We we toured with as it is a year ago this month, and that was with the whole winter vortex. When that happened, it, w it was like negative what in Nashville? Negative two cold. It was so bad. It was insanely it was so cold. Bad, yeah. So like I remember every everyone was like the whole country was freaking out about that. Yeah. But we were driving right through it. Um, we got lucky this tour. I think this is some like the first snow we've hit, and it's there's yeah. two three shows left. It's next. The, I think the only the only bad thing about it is the wind chill in some spots. Like mm -hmm. more north to get it, kind of sucks more. But uh, we've all traveled enough to like kind of deal with, deal with weather like that. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like. This tour is kind of a blessing when it comes to the weather. <laughs> what was what was the cold day? Was that Minneapolis? Minneapolis yeah, oh, was the coldest this year. So that was four, it was four degrees. Oh my gosh. It was four yeah. degrees. It go outside is a like bone chilling. Like it like it right. physically hurts my skin. I want to be outside. Our lock froze on our trailer. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah Which yeah, is true. like terrible in itself, but then you're also like standing out there trying to get it free. Quite hot. Well, yeah, yeah, we take yeah. a lighter and try to like put the flame up in the lock to try yeah. to like melt out. I guess the ice. I don't know how that happens. Yeah. It's just so not my world. I went, I, w I went to walk to, at Minneapolis, I went to walk to like a CVS and I turned, it was like four blocks away and it turned back around halfway through. Mm -hmm. so it's just not worth it. Like, yeah. It's a, lot, a lot of hunkering down yeah. in the green rooms. <laughs> we, we complain a lot. I think it's kind of the nature on tours to complain. <laughs> <laughs> we complain about the weather and how cold it is. Yeah, for sure. And then what's your favorite thing about tours? Meeting people. Yeah. Meeting, I think the, the, I, the main reason I have tours to meet people. Because like a lot of us, we talk about this before we go on stage all the time. But to us, it's every show. We, we kind of every other day. But these mm -hmm. people take time out of their lives to appreciate something that we love, mm -hmm. and I think that's right. something really astonishing. And I used to do that. I, th I was totally on the flip flip side of that, where I would go and look up to artists and go save up money and buy tickets and get there super early to see them. And here we are on the exact opposite side. And it's like. You gotta realize that, and I think me, for me, meeting people is the best thing. Mm -hmm. that without them, we wouldn't be here. That is, that is like a super fun part of tour. It's just like engaging with everyone, yeah, um, as much as we can, or um, you know, try to do. It's crazy how many people we meet. I mean, it's like it's insane. <laughs> it's hundreds a day. It's oh, it's like, so many people. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because we love to meet everybody, and we love to hang around merch and kind of get to know everybody that comes out to see us. And you can create such an experience like off the stage just with them and hearing the stories and you know people do art and stuff for us which is really cool. Um, so it's it's nice to create that experience there and then to also create the experience on stage as well. Yeah. Um, I think one of my favorite things is just learning from the other bands and just watching all the other sets. Um, it's crazy because we have 20 of these in a tour, um, but each city those people only get one of them. Um, so it's kind of trying to you know hunker down on that and really tune into that one night and that one stage and that one performance and make sure that these people that only get to see it once really get the experience that they deserve. Yeah, you kind of have to put your personal stuff aside and really give it like these are for you guys. You know? mm -hmm. So I think that's a huge lesson that I've learned over time. And, I, and I, uh, yeah, just you got to realize that the audience is like the main reason you're there, mm -hmm. and meeting them too is just like a bonus for us at least, you know. What um, stop has had like the best audience so far? I think we're all split on that. We're all split on that. Yeah, we're all split. On that. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's been a lot of good shows. A lot of well, because because yeah. everyone was like Palladium. I I would say Atlanta. Worcester. I would say you say Atlanta. I would say Atlanta. See, I still say Denver. Denver was the first one that was like this. Whoa, is cool. cool. Like everyone's yeah. singing along. Yeah. We're going super hard. And, yeah, and, you know, being the first band on the tour. Seeing like everyone come there and like the, the line to meet us was like around up by the door and it, it was crazy mm -hmm. and that, for that that was me but with the Atlanta show the Masquerade which is really cool we played the big room and then Palladium was always super sick that was a really good show that, Palladium was was I think our favorite show just to play just to play yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. just such a special place I mean we watched countless DVDs that have been filmed yeah yeah, yeah 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 that was to be able to be on the stage. Yeah, that's very cool. You like look up and see all the people. Ton of room on stage. Yeah, yeah. You know, as like a one of four, like 
we don't have like a ton of room every night, uh, so it's cool when we get a little more room to like, move around. So it's like a big stage and it's like a massive crowd. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just like a huge, huge vibe. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if we can all agree on one, but certainly honorable mentions to yeah. Denver and Atlanta uh, and, and, and Worcester. Worcester. Yeah. But also, like, New Jersey was a sick show, too, yeah. and Baltimore was a sick show. It's, it's hard. Like, it's like picking a good kid, kind of. <laughs> so, like, uh, if you have, like, 20 kids. If you have, like, <laughs> yeah, a lot of kids, yeah. But uh, so I think that's, yeah, we're past what I'm at. Is there anything we can expect from Point North in 2020? Too many things. Yeah, <laughs> this is a big year for us. Okay, this year is insane. Yeah, we're, saying, yeah. Um, we're gonna have a lot of music come out this year. We're gonna have a lot of shows this year. Yeah. Um, so there's just going to be a lot. It's gonna be a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, we got, we have like an album that's coming. Yep. We have uh, three tours that we're working on right now. <laughs> One tour or two of them are like already done. Yeah. Um, both with acts that we're super stoked on. Yeah. Um, and I think we'll be doing a lot of our charitable stuff this year as well. Yeah. I think that's going to be like a big, a big highlight of what we're doing. Yeah. Um, as a band, we're trying to give back as much as we can on top of the shows and like the record and stuff. So um, I think we're going to like hone in on a bunch of that. So we'll, we'll, what we do is like back home, I'm a producer. So like all of our music is like self-produced. So we like do it all ourselves at my house. And then we'll like send it out to get mixed or whatever. Um, but we try to take you know extra money from the recording budget and like make big donations or to charities that we're kind of yeah. um, choosing um, as we go throughout our deal. Um, so I think that we haven't really like because since the record is like you know it's not out and we haven't like we've just been we've just been writing. We're kind of figuring out how to facilitate that and what exactly we're trying to do. Yeah. But it's a it's a much bigger vision than the music, I think, um, especially for this first world area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we're excited to do this. It's gonna be crazy for sure.